Good afternoon. The August 21st, 2018 meeting of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners will come to order and we are pleased to have with us today Fire Chief Scott Spencer with us this evening to lead us in our invocation and after the invocation please remain standing for our pledge to the flag. Let us bow before our Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given us, for all the blessings that you provide us on a daily basis, Lord. Thank you for this county, Lord, and uh, for the leadership that our commissioners provide to it. Lord, I ask that you be with them tonight as they make decisions for this county. Give them wisdom of mind. Give them clarity of mind. Uh, help them make decisions that will be pleasing not only to the citizens here in the county, but to you as well, Lord. We thank you for... Uh, their willingness to serve uh, and to be servant leaders. Again, Lord, we just thank you for all the blessings that you give us. We ask that you bless our people that are in the military, Lord, as they serve this great country. We ask to bless on our first responders, Lord, as they keep our county safe and our state safe and our country safe. Uh, continue to be with all them and take them home to their families in the morning. Lord, we ask all these things in your son's holy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Fire Chief Spencer, for being here with us this evening, uh, evening, leading us in our invocation, or with our invocation, and good evening to the citizens of Douglas County. Uh, we value your voice, and, you, and we appreciate your participation in county government. Uh, uh, we have public comment next, and uh, clerk, we have two people that have signed up, and um, I will call you in just a second, but before I call you up, I would just like to say the Board of Commissioners appreciate your contribution and your comments, and uh, everything that you say, we will take uh, the matter under advisement. Uh, you will be allotted three minutes to speak, and once you reach your three minutes, you'll hear a buzzer, and that means that your time has expired. So with that being said, I'll move forward to the first person, or forward with the first person that who signed up, Mr. Larry Pierce, if you could come forth and uh, give us your address, and I believe your subject matter is number 12, Sanctuary Village. How are you today? Well, I'm, I'm fine till I realize I was sitting so close to Judge McLean. <laughs> I may have to, uh, I may have to change my agenda here. Uh, excuse me, Larry Pierce. Yes. Uh, 4120 Van Sant Road, <laughs> Douglasville, Georgia. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm actually going to speak on something in regards to Judge McLean. But before I do, uh, I want to apologize for not being there yesterday morning. Uh, actually, I was in the judge's room up there. Now, it's kind of interesting what I was up there for. I was up there to be a witness, a character witness, for a man who's in jail for murder, James Shelton. Now, the reason I bring this up is I think it really is important to send a message kind of quickly. Yes. And the message is, I was asked to come up there, and I sat there all day. And the defense attorney, Mr. Kiker, never said hello, goodbye, or shook my hand. Mr. Pierce, remember now we need to stay with this yes, matter. Yes, ma'am. And is I just 12. would like to say that if he has anything to say or to ask me about, yes. he can go see the district attorney. Yes, sir. Now, in regards to my last minute or two, the authorization on the funds. Uh, it is good that the funds are paid for by people that are getting in trouble. It helps to keep the ball rolling. Uh, I do have some concerns from an average citizen that the people that are out there, how are they going to get around and what are they going to do after they're there? So all these things, uh, maybe it came up one time or another, I don't know. Uh, I think it's commendable for anyone, judge especially, to take on something like this because we're trying to solve a problem. But I don't know where the problem begins or where it ends. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Pierce. Uh, 
Next, we have Mr. John Tomaski. Mr. Tomaski, please come forward and uh, give us your address. And please remember that all your items, items must be germane to the agenda. Uh, John Tomaski, 2929 Post Road, Winston. Uh, I am speaking to the item on the agenda, public comment. That is the nature of the yes, process. Mm -hmm. uh, well, first, I will uh, preface it with Again, congratulations to Judge McLean for the sanctuary project uh, and also his uh, Christmas project. Very much appreciate that for the community as a whole. Uh, your administration has been uh, active for 20 months and during that period, uh, public comment from residents has included simply public comment from residents. However, uh, yesterday, uh, after I spoke, one of the board members uh, had uh, comments to make about my presentation. Uh, and uh, to my understanding, uh, that was out of order because the agenda item after public comment, and public comment as it reads here on yesterday's agenda, public comment allows the board the opportunity to listen to the public. Mm -hmm. The next agenda item was presentations. If it was felt by the board there was a need to counter, characterize, or miscategorize what I had to say, any member could have made a motion to amend the agenda. And if it were seconded and got three votes out of five, it would have, in the legal sense, been appropriate to proceed as happened. And I say appropriate from the standpoint of rules, but to begin to characterize or interpret what someone else had said, and they're out of time, and have no opportunity to rebut or clarify, that I think in broader terms is inappropriate. But regardless of that, it was certainly out of order mm -hmm. since it was not the next agenda item. The chairman did not call the gentleman out of order. No member <coughs> rose on a point of order to point that out. So again, I'm back to the point of process, structure, and tightening up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Tomaski. We appreciate you participating in county uh, government. Uh, next, we have uh, uh, we have presentations, uh, but uh, with SPLOST, but it's only for follow-up purposes. And um, I just want to make sure. Uh, first of all, I could call just if I could call uh, Miguel, uh, Director Valentina, up, and just if you could just touch bases with us just a little bit and just, if you have anything regarding the SPLOSH update, uh, certainly uh, we had an update yesterday in our work session. So just, this is just, if you have some brevity that you want to share with us, you could. And then uh, I believe Fire Chief just walked out. Oh, there you are, Fire Chief. If you have anything to add, if you don't, I'm okay with it. Do you have anything, Director uh, Valentine? Just want to bring us up to speed for SPLOSH. It just may be re <coughs> reiterated in this particular meeting. Good evening, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, the uh, presentation yesterday was uh, set uh, a different tone to the SPLOS program indicating that uh, revenues are up and that we are in fact uh, on target with uh, many other projects and so beyond that um, I, I would just say that I uh, uh, appreciate the board uh, being patient uh, all these years but there are a number of projects that are coming to fruition and uh, we're not quite there yet, uh, but we are well on our way. Uh, so beyond that, if there's any specific uh, questions about any particular project, I'd be happy to entertain those. Uh, any questions for? No, ma'am. Uh, Director Valentine, okay. And I see you coming up, our Chief. And Director Dukes, do you have any comments regarding parks and recreation? You good? Okay. Uh, fire Chief yep. Spencer, uh, you want to bring us up to speed? We, we did have a fire and EMS committee meeting today, uh, and we will have some recommendations to bring forth full board at the next meeting. Okay. So, thank you to our 
Okay, thank you so much. Okay, we're gonna move right along. We have the approval of the minutes next. The Board of Commissioners, you have the commission meeting, uh, meeting minutes of August 7, 2018, and the work session minutes of August 6, 2018, executive session minutes of August 6, 2018, and the mid-year workshop minutes of August 3rd, 2018. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions that need to be made? No, ma'am. Okay. Being none, the minutes stand approved as presented. Proclamations, uh, next we have tab number five is a proclamation <coughs> pro proclaiming August 21st, 2018 as Girl Scout Troop 316 Day in Douglas County. We have Ms. Diane Jones here from the Douglas County Optimist Club. Thank you so much, Ms. Jones, for being here. We appreciate you coming. Thank you. Uh, let me first and foremost thank you, your staff, and the commissioners for uh, serving Douglas County. Okay, thank you. Um, like Madam Chairman said that my name is Diane Jones and I am the president of the Douglas County Optimist Club. Our purpose is to aid and encourage the development of the youth in the belief that giving of oneself in service and others will advance the well-being of <coughs> mankind, community life, and the world. We each work to make the future brighter and by bringing out the best in our children, in our communities, and in ourselves. When we find outstanding youth, we believe in honoring them. The Girl Scout Troop 316 is such a group, and Ms. Natalie Spindler will be reading the proclamation. Thank you so much, Ms. Jones. Hi, Ms. Spindler. How are you? Thank you. Girl Scout Troop 316 Day, whereas the Douglas County Optimist Club, DCOC, is an autonomous club formed under the umbrella of the Optimist International that is chartered to help improve the lives of youth in our community. <coughs> and whereas the club participates in community events such as Taste of Douglasville, September Saturdays, American Legion car shows, and assists in whatever ways it can to positively impact the lives of kids as with socks for shoe boxes, with a goal of 100 boxes to defects this summer. And whereas the DCOC has been an active club since 2016 with approximately 23 local members, male and female, seeking to help improve children's lives. And whereas the DCOC had a chance encounter with Girl Scout Troop 316 leader, Ms. Stephanie Wolverton, and spoke with, at her troop meeting about a project currently underway called Socks for Shoe Boxes. And whereas Girl Scout Troop 316 were informed that some children in our community can no longer stay with their parents and are taken to a safe place, but must leave all their clothes and personal items due to contamination. And whereas Girl Scout Troop 316 were so moved by the thought of this happening to children about their same ages, that they took action and decided their course of action was to use some of their cookie money to make up 10 shoe boxes for the DCOC's project. Now therefore, Girl Scout Troop 316 demonstrated such humanity and compassion that we hereby acknowledge their selfless act of kindness. We take this action so that Girl Scout Troop 316, under the leadership of Ms. Wolverton, will serve to inspire others to do similar acts of kindness as well. Be it therefore proclaimed by the Douglas County Board of Commissioners that the 21st day of August 2018 be designated as Girl Scout Troop 316 Day in Douglas County. And we encourage all citizens to join us in recognizing and commending the Douglas County Optimist Club for its thoughtful works and deeds in the Douglas County community and bringing to our attention the community spirit of Girl Scout Troop 316. So proclaim this 21st day of August 2018. Thank you so much for reading uh, this wonderful proclamation about <coughs> Girl Scout Troop 316. You all are amazing. Board of Commissioners, you have heard this proclamation. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. <coughs> waiting on the votes on the screen should the 
votes have appeared. It's a unanimous vote. Uh, the motion is approved. The motion carries. Would like if, if the members of uh, Troop Girl Scout Troop 316, if you could stand, and we will give you a standing ovation. Now, please stand. Okay. 316, and then we're going. I will ask our Board of Commissioners to come down and take a photograph with you all. You okay with us taking a photograph with you? We'll be there. We're on our way. Thank you. Once again, again, thank you, Girl Scout Troop 316. Next, we have new business and tab number six, authorization to purchase required easements on parcel ID 0424-1820010, located at 550 Maxim Road, including waiver liens, releases not to exceed $5,000 in connection with the Maxim Road congestion uh, reduction and improvement uh, project, PI, or PL number 001261 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, you have heard uh, this authorization to purchase required easement on parcel ID 0424-182010. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Uh, please prepare to cast your votes. We have a unanimous 5-0 vote. The motion carries. Tab number seven, authorization to purchase required easements on parcel ID number 03751820001, located at 500 Maxim Road, including waiver of lien, releases not to exceed $1,275 in connection with the Maxim Road congestion reduction and improvement project. Uh, Board of Commissioners, you have heard the author authorization to purchase required easement on parcel ID 0375-182001. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. We 
have the unanimous 5-0 vote and the motion carries. Tab number eight, authorization to enter into a final settlement agreement with stipulations in connection with condemnation proceedings for required right of way and easements on parcel ID number 01290150192 located at 2805 Lee Road in connection uh, with the Lee Road widening phase two project which is PL number 0004428 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, you have heard the authorization to enter into, the, into this final settlement agreement with stipulations. Uh, do we have a motion to approve? So move. Second. We have a motion and a second in the discussion. We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. We have a 5-0 uh, unanimous vote. The motion carries. Next, we have a res resolutions, tab number nine. Tab number nine is resolution to adopt the Board of Education 2018 millage rate. We have our Director of Finance, uh, Mrs. Jennifer Holman, here tonight. Uh, Ms. Holman, if you could just enlighten the Board of Commissioners about this resolution and tell us before we move forward with the approval, the approval process. Absolutely. Good evening. Um, the Board of Education adopted their millage rate, 2018 millage rate, last night. Um, they are considered a levying authority, I mean, I'm sorry, a recommending authority. Um, therefore, by law, the Board of Commissioners has to adopt the Board of Education's millage rate because we are a levying authority. Uh, last night, they adopted the maintenance and operation of the school system at 19.7 mills and bond indebtedness uh, for the school system at 1.2 for a total levy for the school board of 20.9 mills. So tonight, I'm just asking the board to adopt the resolution um, to, I'm sorry, to adopt the resolution for the Board of Education's millage rate so that we can proceed in giving the information to the tax commissioner so that he will have the information to go to the state of Georgia to get the digest certified. Okay, thank you so much. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners before I call for a motion? Uh, Commissioner Guider. Yes, uh, Jennifer, uh, did they raise their bond or did they raise the M&O? The M&O. The M&O, mm -hmm. and what was it last year? Um, last year it was 19.75. So they this, came down. They came down, but because they didn't roll it back to the full amount of mm -hmm. the reassessed value, it's still considered an increase. So even though the mill was 19.7, was actually lower than last year, they didn't roll it back all the way. Uh, what about the bond amount? Uh, it kept the same, 1.2, same as last okay, year. Okay, but their cap is 20 mils, so. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> all right, I yield back. Okay, thank you so much. Any other questions from the board? Well, thank you so much, Jennifer Holman, on that, but we have you, if you could just hold on, I have another one for you as well. Uh, board of Commissioners, you have heard the proclamation regarding the resolution to adopt the Board of Education's 2018 millage rate at a rate of 20.9 <coughs> mills. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. We have a unanimous 5-0 vote and the motion carries. Number 10, tab number 10, resolution to adopt the Douglas County Board of Commissioners 2018 millage rate. Uh, Director Holman, would you please bring us up to speed again, up to date, the Board of Commissioners before Absolutely. we adopt? Um, what I did is kind of uh, reduce the PowerPoint presentation that was presented at the mid-year retreat. It's about 10 to 12 slides. <clears throat> Um, and we'll go over that and then we'll present what we're asking you to adopt for the 2018 millage rate. Thank you. Uh, what is a digest? Um, the digest is the total net assessed value of real and personal property, motor vehicles, timber, mobile homes, and heavy duty equipment. The millage rate is a levy which is established by the governing authority for purposes of financing in whole or in part <coughs> the taxing jurisdiction's expenses for their fiscal year. The tax rate on real property is based on $1 per $1,000 of assessed property value. 
what makes a we have an echo up here i don't know what okay. it is uh it's, you may back away it's coming out of this box or oh, something, okay. somewhere in here <laughs> back up okay uh what makes up the digest um, the digest is made up of real property Real property is land and generally anything that is erected, growing, or affixed to the land. It's personal property, which is everything that can be owned that is not real estate. It's inventories, livestock, machinery, and equipment are examples of personal property. You also have motor vehicles, mobile homes, timber, and heavy-duty equipment. All of those categories, you come up with the gross digest. You subtract all of your exemptions. There's numerous exemptions that each homeowner could qualify for. You add the forest land assistant <coughs> grant, which is money comes from the state. When you get those, uh, you, you, receive, um, you then come to the net digest. As we've uh, talked about, and I believe it was in the paper about the digest growth, the, uh, the assessor slash appraisal department sent out assessment notices and 12% in 2018 had no change versus 8% in 2017. 6% had a decrease in this year versus 10% last year. And the same percentage had experienced an increase this year versus last year. We talk about the growth in the digest and there's two types of growth that we wanna discuss. There's reassessment inflationary growth and that is due to reassessment of property the millage rate is rolled back for this type of growth to arrive at a base millage rate, and we'll discuss what later what that base millage rate is for Douglas County. Then you have new growth, and this is due to new or improved property on the digest, business, residential, industrial. You can see our gross digest for real and personal uh, for 2017 was four, almost 4.6 billion. We had reassessment growth of 380 million, which was an 8.29% increase. New growth was 109 million, which was 2.39% increase. To arrive at the gross real and personal digest, which does not include exemptions, is 10.68%, which is just over $5 billion. A little bit of history, um, as you know, we're going through the um, recession, we really took um, some hard hits to our digest. Uh, for 2017, we did experience new growth at 5.62. That was a over 10 year high. Uh, but in 16, it was just over or just under 1%. And you can see in the hard times of the recession, 2013 and 2012, as well as 2010, we were actually had negative growth uh, in the digest. So the two categories, reassessment and new growth, that totaled $489 million in the real and personal digest. 78% of that growth was due to re reassessment growth and 22% was due to new growth. Well, then you have other categories like we talked about. You have motor vehicles. We're gonna to continue to see this category decline. Um, right For this year, it declined 25.54%. And the reason we're gonna see it decline is because of the new tax that replaces what they call the birthday car tax called the title ad valorem tax, the TAVT. Therefore, is eventually our motor vehicle digest, will, I don't know when, but eventually will go away to, to zero because we're receiving a title ad valorem tax. So again, we talked about the gross digest had an increase of 9.92%. Our exemptions also went up by 30.59%. Our forest land protection grant went up by 2.45%. So the number we really look at that determines the millage rate and the value of the mill is our net digest had a total increase of 7.02%. So you hear about the millage rate rollback and whether entities, whether it be a city, board of education, or county, roll back the millage rate. Um, as, as we have mentioned, when you have reassessment value um, that increases the digest, then you're required to roll back the millage rate for it not to be considered a tax increase. Uh, for us, it was reassessments uh, on the net digest totaled 226 million. So when you look at that, 
it's about 5.51% increase to the net digest. So what you do to roll back is you take last year's millage rate of 10.768, you do the millage equivalent of the reassessment, which ends up being 0.555 mils, and you reduce your last year's millage rate by that amount. You're rolling the millage rate back. Therefore, the 2018 proposed millage rate that we're gonna be presenting tonight is decreased by 0.555 mils to 10.213. The new growth is the growth that we like to see because that is additional revenue that when we do roll back the millage rate, it is additional revenue that we get to keep. We don't have to roll back the millage rate for new growth. You can see that we had new growth of just over 62 million that included exemptions and we had new growth of about 1.51%. The net digest uh, again is 1.51% increase and it would give us an additional $667,000 in additional revenue when you compare that to uh, last year's tax levy. I know this chart's hard to see, but the trend is what's the most important. Um, you can see that in before pre-recession, we were at about $4.3 million per meal um, in 2008. It took us 10 years to finally get to the point, and we surpassed it a little bit, but not by much. It took us 10 years to get back to where we were in 2008. You can see the trend continue in, in 2010 goes down, and it can, continues to decrease until 2015. We see an increase, and then it continues to increase since then. So the recession hit us hard. We all felt it uh, personally and here at the county's budget, but hopefully we can uh, start seeing the new growth come in um, and help make that go up even higher. What makes up the county digest? You have residential, which makes up 57%. Commercial <laughs> makes up 25%. Industrial makes up 12.67%. Motor vehicles continues to go down, it makes up 1.4%. Then utilities make up 2.41, and then conservation, agriculture, and other <coughs> make up just under 0.9%, or just under 1%. We always like to show this graph because uh, we want the citizens of Douglas County to know where their tax dollars go. I believe this graph is also on the tax bill. So they're reminded that because when they go and pay their taxes, if they don't have an escrow account, they make the check out to the Douglas County Tax Commissioner. Therefore, they think all of the money comes to the Douglas County Government Board of, Ed, uh, Board of Commissioners. Um, but when you look at the tax bill, and we didn't include cities in here, uh, we just wanted to break out the unincorporated. You see the Board of Education, <coughs> if they, they adopted a 20.9 mil uh, millage rate, Therefore, they receive 67.17% of the taxes. What's being proposed tonight for the Board of, uh, Board of Commissioners to approve is 10.213 mills, and that would be 32.83% of the tax bill. So the resolution that you have before you is um, what we're recommending, the maintenance and operation uh, millage rate, gross millage rate is 13.758. We have to roll back the local option sales tax. Uh, that was um, the purpose of the local option sales tax was to give homeowners uh, a break, a tax break. Therefore, when you roll that back, uh, you have the net total for the general fund at being 10.213. And also, as part of adopting the millage rate, uh, the state requires that it be noted how you use your insurance premium tax. So just for the record, the 2017 insurance premium tax and the full amount of $5,725,981.20 has been earmarked for county fire protection in the unincorporated area of the county. So that is what's before you today, and that's what we are recommending that you uh, passed the resolution for a millage rate of 10.213. Thank you so much, Director Hallman. Any questions before we I call this uh, resolution to be adopted from the Board of Commissioners? Yes. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson. Th th thank you, Madam Chair. A um, couple of comments. <clears throat> and, and again, it, it's more, I'm, I'm going to speak broadly. This is something that um, we, we have to follow every year, which is obviously setting the millage rate, which accommodates the budget that we approved um, at the beginning of the year. Um, 
again, my approach to the budgeting process in Douglas, we're talking about budgeting. The budgeting process in Douglas County it, it is more of a, a steady. Um, it's always, uh, especially for <coughs> District 2, is making sure citizens understand that, okay, there are some objectives, there are some priorities, everybody must weigh in, uh, constitutional officers, to, to, to you name it, a average you know, citizens that are out there in the county that have their nonprofits. I mean, if anybody has something to talk about, we have to be able to accommodate this, and this is important. <coughs> but at the end of the day, the question is, how do we measure those appropriations that are being requested, whether you're elected or you're part of the appointment process? How do we give, how do we give accountability for that? And it's through this exercise that we're going through right now to be able to do so. And so now we've got, now that we've set a budget, we now have to pay for that budget. And this is where I'm going. We have to now pay for it. People went out there and they said, this is what we think is appropriate to spend your tax dollars. Everybody got in the ring. Now here we are as a board of commission. Now we've got to pay for what we've already committed for. All right, so here we are. So I'm looking at this, and so we have to make an estimate. <coughs> we call it a guesstimate or estimate or a forecast mm -hmm. on what we think the outcome will be. And last year we got, what, five point what percent? 5.62. 5.6. I'm going to be quick because i got to stay in my three minutes. 5.6 percent. <clears throat> but we had a, uh, what, Director Hallman has always stayed pretty conservative at a 1 percent. Mm -hmm. Can I give you credit for that? Yes. Um, and I likewise, this year I came in, well, we're going to grow probably no more than 2 percent, and I think it came in, what, at 1 what? 1.5. One, right in the middle, right down the middle. And so our point is, is that while I recognize there's people who desire to spend both internally and those who are associated with us, it's important that we got to stay within our lane. It's got to be steady. Last year, that 5-5 five, five was an anomaly. I come back to like, no, guys, it's steady. We're blessed to get a SPLOS. Thank you, citizens. But it wasn't necessary. We know that there's needs. There's $10 worth of needs within this county administration. But at the same point, we only got $1 to work with. So I appreciate the discipline that we have to go through through this process, but now we've got to pay for this. And that one and a half is key. I, 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 I still think next year we, we got to stay steady. I know the growth is coming. I know we're anticipating some commercial, but guys, don't get ahead. Don't spend money you don't have quite yet. Be steady. So Madam Chair, I just wanted to bring home that point of, um, of making sure that we, we hear citizens' input on the budget process. We get other elected officials involved in this budget process that we have to go through every year and that we as the Board of Commissioners have to now approve um, the funding for that. So I yield back, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Any other comment? Commissioner uh, Guider? Yes, uh, Jennifer, uh, yesterday it was reported uh, it was about the splash, but um, we have another one cent. It's a local option sales tax, mm -hmm. and it is used as a rollback on uh, property taxes and um, so when people shop here in Douglas County they need to know that one cent of it does come back to them on their property taxes mm -hmm. and uh, so there's been an uptick and so hopefully hopefully that will increase um, or keep going up and uh, it benefits the homeowners uh, this only applies to you if, um, let's see, does it apply if you've got, well, any property, yeah, yes. any property mm -hmm. out here, I don't, in the personal property and mm -hmm. real estate, okay. So, um, by local, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Thank you. Now you're back. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Guy, a very good point. Okay, well, I'll call for a motion. Madam Chair. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't see yes. you, Commissioner Mitchell. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, just, just a couple of things I, I just want to run by, which great presentation and, and understand. Please explain the, the Roy Barnes <laughs> makeup of the rollback as a property tax increase versus, because there's not a village rate increase, so that the general public understand that whole makeup and why. Exactly. Uh, let's just say for this year, we decided to keep the millage rate the same as last year. Correct. Uh, because our reassessment growth, um, it, what that rule did is did not allow the county to receive additional revenue without it being considered a, a tax increase. Right. Therefore, if we kept the millage rate the same, mm -hmm. we would generate additional revenue just because the values went up. Correct. However, 
by law, we're required to call it a tax increase. That is correct. Which a lot, you know, among my fellow network of finance directors, that gets on our nerves. That's yes. it's very misleading. It is. Um, just because if the value of something goes up, of course the taxes are going to go up, correct. but the tax rate itself remain the same. Uh, but the way the state requires us to report it, it's a 30-inch square, um, six, uh, 30 inch square ad in the paper saying it's a tax increase. Correct. You have to have it verbatim in the paper, even though uh, your millage rate may stay the same. And, and like that's the board what I want to it, clarify. It's it yes. not a millage rate increase. Right. Even if you kept the, if you kept the, the mm -hmm. rollback, it's just nothing more than the assessment value yes. dollars and cents had, had increased. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. And that's and what you, I want, just want to clarify because there was once a, a couple of times out in a couple of meetings I've had, I've explained that whole process. Mm -hmm. And I found a few citizens would have preferred to not roll back based on where this county and where we're going from <coughs> services. Because as we would say with all the new growth and, and others that are forthcoming that you might want to hang on to that, that additional dollars. And, and speaking of which, how much is that in dollars and cents? So let's talk the real world. We, we, can, uh, talk, we can talk dear dollars. What is that? Uh, uh, for, well, that would be, uh, that was for the new growth, but yes. for the reassessment, reassessment yes. uh, the rollback, yes. it was $2.4 million. Right. Okay. Okay. And what would that be in dollars and cents on a savings on the rollback? On 120, mm -hmm. yes. 125,000 fair market value home, it would have been about $25. Correct. Correct. So that's why I just want to make sure that we, we understand that, you know, the real, in layman terms, what that is, because it's kind of confusing, you know, to saying, well, there is a, a, a savings to a, a household of about $25. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, with operationally what's coming on the books in the future, um, I could see the same hole that we're digging ourselves into could become the same once upon a time of 23% increase in the millage rate one day. Because coming on, online, correct me if I'm wrong, coming online, we've got the uh, Senior Citizen Center that's coming online. Yes, sir. Uh, operationally, that, you know, we got splots to pay for it. Mm -hmm. But the brick and mortar, it's, it's being paid for. But when the operational costs come around, we'll, we'll look at a cost there of about, I'm going to say about three to $400,000 mm -hmm. for operational costs. Uh, we've got a fire station coming out west. I don't remember what fire station number that is, but that's coming as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, a community center. Um, so there's a lot of things that's, that's in the mm -hmm. hopper that's going to be forthcoming that when you think about it, that's an expense, mm -hmm. an ongoing expense that we'll be looking at down the road. Now, I, I, I'm for, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'll be, you know, silly of me to not accept and, and push forward on a rollback, but I want you to be, re not you, but I want to mm -hmm. be realistic about kind of what you're really getting yourself into, though. Just FY, and, and it's not a, a, it's just more of a statement, not a question to you, though. So, uh, outside of that, so new growth, 2.39, uh, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, and then we got the reassessment value. Because when I sell my property, I, I want it to be at a higher cost because I want you to, <laughs> I want a return on my value of my, of my home. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I'm paying taxes, I want it to be at a lower cost mm -hmm. of value wise and assessed mm -hmm. value. So, I, I get it, but you can't have it both ways. Correct. So, all right. I yield back, Madam Chair. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Uh, okay. We'll move forward. Uh, Board of Commissioners, you have heard the resolution to, uh, to adopt the Douglas County Board of Commissioners 2018 millage rate uh, rollback of 0.55 mills. Do we have a motion to approve? So, so move. I do second. <laughs> she has it. I second, Madam Chair. We have a motion and a second. Any, any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. <coughs> we have a unanimous 5-0 uh, vote. Uh, the motion carries to roll back the millage rate to 0.55 mills. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Director uh, Holman. Last but not least, we have the consent agenda next, and all items under the consent agenda are subject to final legal review. 
Tab number 11, resolutions adopting the new <coughs> process required by the Department of Revenue in which all 911 fees are to be collected and remitted back to local governments subject to final legal review. Tab number 12, authorization to utilize $159,078 of date funds for construction completion of the Sanctuary Village project and amend the budget. Tab number 13, authorization to approve a car allowance in agreement with Amy Sub Subhani in the district attorney's office and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 14, authorization to approve the Douglas County Safety Manual revision and update as recommended by the safety board. Tab number 15, authorization to apply for three different right of way easements for the construction of radio towers in the 2016 SPLOST Public Safety Radio System Project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 16, authorization to accept a check from the sheriff's office scope account in the amount of $286.78 for candy given out at the 4th of July parade. Tab number 17, authorization to accept a check from the sheriff's office scope account in the amount of $49.80 for the food purchases for the scope pro uh, program. Tab number 18, authorization to award a contract to Carter Watkins Associates for arch architectural services to design the Deer Lick Park restroom facility and tennis courts as recommended by the Parks and Rec <coughs> Oversight Committee to be funded through 2016 SPLOS funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Tab number 19, authorization to negotiate with Transitions Commute S Solutions, LLC, to be the third party operator of Douglas County fixed route shuttle system as recommended by the Transportation Committee. And tab number 20, authorization to accept reimbursement funds from FEMA for expenditures incurred from Hurricane Irma Disaster Declaration DR4338 in the total amount of state and federal funds of $13,920.06 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budgets. Board of Commissioners, you have heard um, the consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion Thank on you. any items? Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. I Thank you, Madam Chair. You. I've just got two I'm going to, I'm going to cover. Um, and again, I recognize this is the consent agenda. Um, number 12, Sanctuary Village. Um, can we talk about that, Madam Chair? Sure. Yes. We have Judge McLean here. Judge McLean. Would you please come forward, Judge? <clears throat> Sir. Judge, we welcome. appreciate it. Again, we, we always appreciate you and all of the elected officials to come down and, and help help us better understand for the citizens when we spend money and, and what allocations, appropriations are for. And so you've always been willing to do that, whether it's doing a constitution offer meeting or doing these. It, it, I appreciate that so that we, we, we have clarity. Th that being said, can you, for the citizens, can you tell us, and this is for the citizens, Judge, um, what we're trying to accomplish here, Pierre, sir? Well, first of all, Date funds are surcharges on fines that are imposed on criminal offenders who've committed drug offenses. Secondly, uh, those funds are legally required to be used for drug treatment programs. Third, we propose as part of our treatment programs in Douglas County to provide housing for people that we're delivering treatment to. Uh, and fourth, housing is treatment. I think if you do the research I've done, just do a little Googling, you'll find that uh, it's almost impossible to help people with substance abuse problems if they're living in a tent or if they're under a tree. And uh, people that are professionals in this area have determined that the housing resource is critical to be able to get a person who's in the throes of addiction uh, back on their feet and back to being a productive uh, citizen. And one thing I brought, I think, to your attention and to the other members of the board's attention is we've had two moratoriums on accepting people into our drug court because we had no housing for them. And we simply could not accept them. And so we had to communicate to defense counsel and the DA's office, if they want to just go ahead and take their guilty plea and go to prison, 
because uh, Pastor Ford's housing is full and we have nowhere to put you, then that's what you need to do. Or if you just want to sit in jail indefinitely until a housing space is open. So the goal here is to get people into treatment and housing is simply a necessary adjunct of that. We don't have enough. So the decision was to build it. Okay. And, and th thank you, sir. And so just as a point of clarity, these are questions that, are, that I consistently ask, which is, um, is there a, a situations where you have co-occurring drug DUI and mental health? Is this sanctuary village only relegated for those who are in that lane of your court, sir? Can you answer that? Absolutely. We have a lot of people who have what you've described as co-occurring disorders. Uh, we have women who've been uh, sexually molested, who have post-traumatic stress, um, who are self-medicating. We have uh, men who are veterans who have post-traumatic stress who are self-medicating. We have people with bipolar disorder uh, who are self-medicating. And that's one of the things we've discovered over the past three years is the relationship between mental illness and drug addiction is people seek the substance to deal with the emotional issues that they have some sometimes they go back to their childhood and that's why we have the agreement with willowbrook and brought uh, emily hines aboard who i'm sure you've met we introduced her to you and she does the mental health treatment piece for our drug court participants and and provides the treatment piece for our mental health <coughs> court participants as well under the leadership of judge adams okay I, and i gotta just i get a lot of these questions are for the record and my last one um judge i'm going to yield back to madam chair which is sanctuary village is this an asset or property that the county owns yes okay so completely the, owned by the county and and you're going to let me run it as long as you let me run it, but we're under your leadership here and under your supervision here, and the assets completely and totally owned by you. Okay. So, and, and so I want to make sure that we're clear um, legally and financially, which is um, for, 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 for your efforts um, to facilitate contributions from the public no more than our animal shelter that helps with services, et cetera, it's not a problem. Um, is that through the county? Is there a legal entity that exists, a 501c3? How are we facilitating the cash flow? I'm just curious. Excellent question. And through my ministry activities uh, that I know you're familiar with, through Operation Christmas, through Faith in Action, through the Pantry <coughs> Food Bank, I have a relationship with a 501c3 known as Life Tools Community Development. So if people want to make an actual financial contribution to the Sanctuary Village project, then we have that structure in place if they want a tax deduction. And as I presented to the work session, we have had some persons who have made some contributions. And there's also uh, the, the two grants we have applied for from Lowe's and Home, De Home Depot. A, a lot of places where you apply for a grant they require that a 501c3 make the application. So we have that relationship with Life Tools, and I work with them to, to help me get our grant applications turned in so we can have that additional source uh, of funding. And that the other organization that I'm not going to name yet that I discussed on paying for utilities, they also need to deal with either a government or a 501c3 so it's just a good thing to have uh when we're receiving private donations very good so count um, um county attorney are we we're good on this is this is are yeah. we all lined up yeah and i just want to make sure because you asked a lot of questions in there uh mr vice chairman the perp the the i agree with judge mcclain and we've looked at the law and under ocga 1521 101 if you have a drug court or a substance abuse court or an alcohol division court, these funds are an appropriate expenditure because housing is treatment. As you get to the other issue that you sort of alluded to about mental health in general, this date fund is not about mental health in general. This date fund is for court purposes 
to run a treatment program for alcohol and substance abuse pursuant to the date fund expenditure. And so the county attorney is telling you you can spend date funds for the purpose <coughs> established by the judge, but I don't want you to read outside that boundary that it means you can do other things outside his drug court. Okay. Madam Chair, I yield to my colleague now. Okay. Any other I questions? Commissioner Guider. Yes, Judge, you, you have five mobile homes down there now. Yes. Uh, how many units will that be? 20. It'll be 20 units. And uh, for just one individual? Yes. Uh, has there been any talk, talk about having bunk beds and having two people live in there? Well, I, I think we're probably going to be <clears throat> limited uh, by standards of how many people you can put in so many square feet. So uh, I don't see that as a realistic possibility because of those standards. Uh, have you built out that area? Is that the five mobile homes, is that all that can go in there? Pretty much <coughs> once we do the landscaping piece and make it look Homey. as nice as anything you've ever seen, uh, we, I don't think we'll have any more space because the, the land behind, directly behind the three trailers we need for field lines for the, the sewage septic. improvements. Mm -hmm. So we'd have to probably go to another site, although there's a lot of land on the landfill, but that particular site that animal control using was using is going to be built out. But you got the mobile homes free of charge from the school system. Two so. and two from you and your fellow commissioners. Pardon? Two from you and your fellow commissioners. There oh. were two already on site yes, that were being yes. used by animal control that we are converting okay, into but, residences. And plus you're taking the house that's out there and uh, converting that for the men <clears throat> and yes, you've moved the women. To so. the Cornerstone house. Yes. Okay. Very well. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Thank you, Judge. And again, as always, job well done. But just. As a follow-up question on, so I'm assuming to, to assure that we separate the two, the date funds versus mental health funds, I'm assuming you're going to have a great accountant or somebody who's handling your finances that assures that you kind of keep those separations so we won't kind of get us, get anybody in, in no kind of unique situations, I would assume. Can I address that directly? Yes, yes. yes. Um, it would not be legal for us to house a person whose issues are purely mental health issues in that facility. Okay. It would not be a proper use of the funds because they're restricted mm -hmm. to, to drugs only. Got it. Now, you know, I, I have friends in Atlanta, we could probably get that law changed, but uh, <laughs> but for the time being, we can't do it. Understood, understood. Okay, I, and, and, and good to know that there is a 501c3 that you're working closely hand in glove with to kind of navigate the, uh, the funding sources or any funds that people donate, whether it's uh, businesses or, or individuals, that that, that can uh, create a tax write-off for them and legally that we're, you know, in order, <laughs> I guess. Um, That's important to me as a yes. judge to be legal, uh, I, I would, uh, <laughs> quite, quite frankly. I, 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 I believe in you. <laughs> we believe in you. Um, <laughs> so, so again, though, um, the 501c3 is, like I said, is a, is a, is a key here that, to make sure. How close are you and Pastor Ford? Uh, working? Very close. Okay. So you guys are doing a lot together or you, you, you kind of interchange with? with um, I was one of the people he asked to talk to when he received this call. Got it. We're very close. Understood. Understood. Um, okay. Well, job well done. Uh, I, I'll pass. I guess I'll... Uh, uh, That'll be all I have to, on this particular topic. I, I do have some others, but I'm assuming that I want to give it back to the floor back to uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Though, so. yeah. yeah, I'm good. You, you good? Okay. Good. Any I'm other good. questions? Good. Okay. Well, thank you so much, uh, Judge. Well, well this yeah. is a big moment for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an emotional moment for me. I feel like this is the beginning of the end of homelessness in our community. Uh, are we going to fix it 100 percent? No. But everyone's going to have a chance. Right. And that's what you folks are accomplishing with your decision tonight. Every person living in the woods with a substance abuse issue is going to have a chance to fix their problem. And so I want to thank you 
for giving those citizens that chance. I think we're going to be judged by how we treated the people that are the most marginalized in our society. And thank you for giving them voice tonight. You're so welcome, Judge. Thank you. We appreciate uh, your efforts. And uh, certainly, you mentioned in our meeting that uh, this is a model for the state of Georgia. I believe it's one of the first in the state. So the first one. The first one. So thank you. Appreciate all your hard work. Uh, any other questions from the Board of Commissioners yeah, for anyone else? Up. Vice Chairman Robinson, you Yeah, I just want to finish else? up. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, I just have one. Um, if you'll bring um, Director Watson down, Madam Chair. Yes, Director Watson and I believe Mr. Yep. Rison. I believe I'm right. Bring your team. Come with him as well. Can you address um, transition to that one, please? Absolutely. <clears throat> Thank you. Through a, the request for qualifications process and the evaluation process, We've uh, identified a potential provider for our fixed route bus service system. Uh, tonight, we're uh, requesting your authorization for us to negotiate a contract with uh, Transition Solutions Commute. Uh, their CEO, Justin Rising, is here today. He'll be glad to talk a little bit about himself and his, and his uh, company. Please um, go ahead and do that, and I'll ask my questions and yield as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Risen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, again, my name is Justin Risen. I'm the CEO of Transitions Commute Solutions. Um, a lot of times people see our title, and it's a very long title, and they think commute is moving people back and forth. But uh, prior to being in transportation, I was actually in law enforcement. And in law enforcement, commute also means to reduce. And in transportation, what we're really trying to do is reduce the burden that some people have to get to medical appointments to family visits to their employers. Uh, and tonight, what we're talking about is a fixed route service for your community. Uh, I appreciate you speaking with me and allowing our company to potentially operate your fixed route service, but this is a, a tremendous uh, and very special moment for your community uh, because you're gonna create something that will reduce potentially the burdens of a lot of people to, to try to get the basic needs that they have. So this is a great opportunity for you guys and we look forward to supporting you. And, and, and so, Gary, again, we're, again, we're, we're, we're this contract, what is the, the dollar amount? I'll go in reverse and what I want to really say. What, what, what are we targeting here that they'll have to operate within? Estimated $2 million per year. Estimated $2 million. And we talked about yesterday on the need, um, I think it was, and, and again, um, I think my colleague for Commissioner Mitchell who wasn't here, I want to make sure that he was, he, he was clear that we did discuss this part, which is out of that $2 million, which we recognize, um, I think was mentioned yesterday that he can fit within the budget. There was an express need and desire to make sure that we had a more detailed accounting of what the actual expense was going to be on a monthly basis per annum. Is that accurate? Absolutely, yes, okay. sir. Will that be able to be provided for us, the Board of Commissioners, for our ongoing management as Most well certain. as for the broader public? Yes, sir. Okay, I just want to make sure we rehashing what was always talked about. Yeah. All right, I'm going to keep going. Uh, that being said, here's one thing I want to talk about. Uh, again, for the record, I, again, I speak to District 2, is that, okay, so he talked about law enforcement, which I appreciate your background, and we have had this conversation uh, because this came out of recommendation with the Transportation Committee. But what happens when we had bad behavior on our, it can just happen. We're dealing with humanity. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's on the Enoch and Lodge Express that I know that's going to get out of here early. So there's, there, there potentially could be exposure to bad behavior. How will your system and your solution for us here in Douglas County address bad behavior, which we talked about before? Absolutely. Well, first we start with the training for our drivers. We'll bring members of your community in and hire locally for all of your drivers and for our management team. And we'll begin that process by making sure that they're well trained before they even step foot in their first operational bus. Typically that process is, is between uh, seven and 10 days of actual training. Uh, that's, com that's a combination of in-classroom training as well as being inside the bus. Uh, so that's the first part, is making sure that the individuals that are operating this program have the experience and understanding how to, to deal with a variety of situations. And, and when you say bad behavior, um, there is a lot of behavior that occurs um, that I, I wouldn't necessarily uh, delineate it as good and bad, but things occur. People have health emergencies, medical emergencies, you'll have youth, you'll have seniors with dementia um, that might be trying to go to a different location than what they're supposed to based on the manifest and the routes and the things of that nature. So we, our drivers will have the training to deal with those things. But actual physical emergencies, uh, we deal with those in a couple different aspects. 
One, uh, our technology will be as such that the drivers will readily be able to uh, identify those emergencies through either a tablet or the communication with our call center. Uh, we'll have a designated call center that our drivers will be able to uh, reach, and they're, they're there specifically for the drivers. And our call center is already up and running. It's already uh, serving the state of Georgia, and our call center staff are trained to report emergencies. So when those emergencies occur, depending on what they are, uh, the call center will dispatch uh, medical resources or police resources to the scene to make sure that both the uh, commuters in that vehicle, the individual, and the driver are as safe as possible during the incident. Okay. My last question, and I'll yield back all my questions, Madam Chair, on this and other matters regarding the contingent is um, how will you work over the next five months or six months? But Gary, can you explain the process that he will do, just his process, and what it means to bring to do an onboarding for a new system? What does that look like for the public? Can, can you describe that just in general without sure. it? Yeah. Well, of course, the first thing we'll need to do is negotiate the contract. But <clears throat> after that, will immediately start looking at the routes. Uh, Justin and his people will actually drive the routes, run the routes with us, and they'll tell us what's gonna work and what's not going, going to work. And then we'll start looking at the, at the hiring process and the training process. And then just get past that, get down in, into um, matters such as, as fare collection, um, how are the drivers going to be in, involved in that? What kind of fair media will we will be using? Um, driver safety, passenger safety, um, many things like that. And so, and, and so then in closing, as we're talking about this, there was an experience that we had during this previous process to get here about communication and the need to make sure that the public was still engaged in there. So it sounds like there's still opportunity for the public to weigh in on bus routes and we know that there's a <coughs> formal process that's associated with this dealing with the FTA. We talked about it in the Transportation Committee today and I, this is just for the record um, to the full board that a recommendation will come forth on um, public engagement. Is that accurate? Yes. Sir. All right. And then that we recognize that there's two formal public hearings that need to be had. Is that true? Correct. As part of this process. It's also acknowledged as part of the recommendation that will come before the Board of Commissioners at the next meeting deals with uh, district meetings. Is that true? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, and I just want to, for the record, communicating to the public that we're not just going to go into a vacuum and then five months later there's going to be out pops a system. It just shows up. There is a very formalized and more strengthened way in which we're going to engage the public. Is that true? Absolutely. We're going to have a number of public meetings uh, in all districts throughout the county. Plus, we'll, we'll have a considerable media blitz uh, as well. And it's my understanding also that, that this time we're going to have a, uh, an online survey uh, that individuals will be able to go online and, and uh, talk about routes, stops, and things like that that they would like to see for the service. You're good. You sufficiently answered my question. Madam Chair, I yield back all questions. Okay, thank you so much. And if you could just if you could just reiterate of the hiring process you said to you yesterday you yesterday that you would uh, plan to hire uh, the citizens of Douglas County regarding uh, just your drivers and things of that sort. Could you elaborate a little more for us? Yes, ma'am. Uh, when we get ready to go live, if, if we're able to uh, negotiate the contract, yes, uh, we have a couple different processes. One, historically, we have worked with and will continue to work with Department of Labor. Uh, as with any veterans agencies, uh, that's typically our go-to locations when we begin new contracts or come into new communities. We find that both of those agents are able to apply talent to us uh, at a vast amount of levels. Uh, I actually have a partner uh, that I've made partner in my company that was started as a driver force in one of my communities uh, that was a, a previous veteran. So that's, those are the two agencies we'll reach out to for job fairs, for having uh, locational meetings. Uh, for people that may not have access to computers or the technology to apply online. Uh, we will also have an online portal that will allow people to come and identify themselves, uh, not just for the jobs that we're looking for, but if there are particular talents that they feel like that they have in transportation or within the community. For example, communication, uh, working within certain regions or, or certain demographics uh, for people that are looking for needs of the community, uh, we'll reach out to those individuals as well. Uh, but our employment base will be structured here in Douglas County. Uh, to make sure that the needs of the individuals are met. That we always find that the best representatives of the community are the people of the community. Thank you so much. You. Okay, Commissioner Mulk here. Yeah, his, his remarks generated a, a question for me. We've talked about, a lot about operation. 
uh, operation of a, uh, any kind of system uh, is not just about being on the road, but it's also about maintenance. And uh, how do you address uh, maintenance of, of the fleet here in Douglas County? We'll be working directly with Douglas County for their maintenance department and working with them hands-on. Uh, but we will be following all of the DOT and FTA standards. They have a very rigorous uh, maintenance procedure that is used to be kept, especially for when you're using fixed routes vehicles. Uh, it's typically a 5,000-mile maintenance procedure, uh, but all of our vehicles will be required to have a pre- and post-trip inspection. And we also have an application that our, all of our drivers can immediately identify when there is a safety concern. So as far as maintenance goes, uh, typically it stems from the FTA and DOT regulatory that we follow. Okay. Who, uh, who uh, provides the maintenance? We do. Under this agreement. We do. Douglas County is going to provide the maintenance. It, as you probably remember, in the new county annex building, we dedicated 2,400 square feet to a maintenance facility for uh, FTA-funded vehicles. And so the, uh, the cutaways that, that Justin's people will be using in our service will be uh, managed and main, maintained uh, in our space by our, our current uh, fleet. Uh, employees. That's that's what I wanted brought brought out. Our new uh, fleet maintenance building uh, was partially funded by FTA funds, uh, with the forethought that they would be maintaining, uh, to some degree, our uh, our fleet. Uh, yes, sir. And so, uh, thank and it's, you. It's it's well equipped, to Very good. Right, I yield back. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Mitchell. Yes, I'll chime in and I'll be brief. Uh, <laughs> Just, just a couple, I don't know who may be able to answer this question though, but when we talk about the detailed costs of what we'll incur monthly, weekly, annually, how would that be broken out to, to notify us as commissioners or I don't know if that will go directly to Gary to notify uh, the, the county manager or whomever, how, would, how what, what's the plan on that so we can kind of get detailed because I just want to make sure that, that we definitely stay within budget and that this still is making sense as we progressively go into whatever direction or whatever the, this journey ends up being with this pilot program, so. As far as the actual details of the budget, there are multiple different directions we can move in this. Okay. Uh, right now, GDOT is recommending more of a cost per hour uh, reimbursable rate, which is easier for you. Uh, but one of the conversations we've had with Gary uh, and his team is to recommend a not to exceed budget light item for your operation. Therefore, it'll be written in the contract that once that budget is established, uh, that even though we need to operate all 12 months of the year, that we stay within that guideline so it doesn't affect you in a negative budget line item. Correct. So, so, but even in, in staying within that guidelines, there are, there are also guidelines that, that our expectation is Monday through Saturday, if I'm not mistaken, and there's a certain time frame. I just want to make sure that not only we stay within the time, for the dollars and cents to, uh, cost, analysis, but I want to also make sure that we kind of providing what we stated that that would what this pilot program will look like. Well, how do you how do you balance the two, though? For us, there there's uh, several different uh, governmental and internal documents that we produce. One is the actual tracking of expenses and also is the tracking of the ridership that goes along with it. Good. What that allows us to do is create what is really your, your national transit database uh, requirements, which really that's the the what we're going for down the road. Through this pilot program, we're trying to build a base of ridership that through those collection of, of ride time and dollars equals the offset of the program. You're on so it, yes. that's what we want. At the end of the day, we want this program to be self-sustaining. Yes. Uh, and that is done by making sure that our spend doesn't e uh, exceed the amount of ride time that our riders have. And so that has to be our goal for operation. Yeah, but stay there, though, with the ridership. So you, you're right on point of where I was actually going with this, though, is that my, that was this conversation has been had on numerous occasions about ridership will determine kind of where the routes and where it would go. So that data is going to be important, at least to me and I think to this board and probably to yourself to know, is the route making sense? Should it be altered? Absolutely. It, you know what I mean? And, so, and, and I know I'm regurgitating a little bit of yesterday, but uh, this is a living, breathing uh, event that we're doing with Fixed Route. We can't go in with one idea and say this is what we're going to do and this is where it's going to stay 12 months out of the year or 24 months down the road. Um, we've been a part of many pilots in, in situations where you're taking care of 0.5% of the people with 7% of the budget, mm -hmm. and that's not effective. So what we'll be doing is calculating each month and, and through the seasons and through the holidays Understood. as we go <laughs> to make sure that that ridership and the spend stay balanced. 
And that'll be something that we can bring back to the board uh, and, and to the transportation agency to make sure that you understand that these are the times that are fiscally sound as mm -hmm. well as times that aren't, but do you want to continue to invest in, th in these because Understood. of the people that you reach? And that's the data that's going to be needed to make it make sense. Absolutely. You know, and that's the real-time data that we'll need to make it make sense to alter a route or to keep a route or to get rid of it, <laughs> the, the route. Um, the other question, safety. Uh, what's, the, what's that safety plan? I know you spoke about safety earlier. The safety plan, you know, not only just for the rider, but for the drivers and everybody else that's involved in this whole makeup. What's that safety plan that you're going to engage with? Well, as far as a plan, we obviously have a, an internal safety pro policy that, that we, and that's everything from how a driver conducts themselves to our drug and alcohol policies to our security and background checks. Uh, for us, safety begins with a good, thorough interview of the driver, making sure that that person that's put behind the wheel of the vehicle is the right person. Uh, and then from that point on forward, it's continuous training. And we train our drivers every month with safety talks. We have quarterly meetings of training, always reassuring any seasonal changes that occur. Um, you know, for us, when school changes, when fall comes, when summer mm -hmm. comes, all these things create situations where safety can ebb and flow. So we have a safety manager. We also have an in-house training individual that if somebody is not performing to our standards on our, our uh, monthly reviews, because all of our drivers are reviewed monthly by the manager okay. for ride-alongs. And, and there's a whole set of processes that we use to make sure okay. that once that driver's on the road, they spend time with people in the review to make sure they're providing the safest trip possible. Good, good, good. And last but not least, though, marketing, uh, marketing plans. I don't know, Gary, you guys kind of, what does that marketing plan looks like? Because I think we've got our marketing director, I mean, communications director that's here that we want to make sure that we use every and any resource outside of just online, that be inclusive online, TV, I mean, smoke signals to assure kind of these are, these are the routes, these are the costs, these, these are the benefactors, this is where it's going, and so on, so. Yes, sir. That was a topic of a long conversation at the transportation committee okay, meeting okay. today. And basically what we're looking at doing is uh, extending the contract of the collaborative firm that has worked with us for the past a few months. But okay. we'll have more for you on that at your next work session. Got it. Okay. Well, good. Yeah. Okay. Just as long as we, you know, I, I think we're doing all the, we're putting all the right things in place. Just, um, th this is, this is crucial. And I, and I know my vice chair, chairman of, uh, transportation is definitely, uh, I should have known that he, he's probably already kind of asked and, and presented uh, a ton of these questions that we're kind of putting forth to you guys now though. But again, thank you. And I, and I appreciate it. And I yield back now, chair. Okay. Thank you so much. Our board of commissioners, we have a motion and thank you so much, uh, uh, director Watson and Mr. Risen. Uh, Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second for the uh, consent, consent agenda. Please prepare to cast your votes. We have a unanimous 5-0 vote. Uh, the motion carries. Next, we have the approval of the minutes. Uh, commissioners, uh, I requested that you take a look at uh, your expenses. I'm sorry, I said approval of the minutes, but I meant approval of expenses. Please, uh, I ask you to take a look at those yesterday. So with that being said, I will call for a motion. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve the expenses? So moved, ma'am. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. Please prepare to cast your votes. We have a unanimous vote 5-0, uh, the motion carries. Uh, next, I'll move to the announcements, but before I remove, uh, move to the announcement, I, I would like to recognize Boy Scout Troop uh, 3, I believe it's 3. Yeah, 3. Mm -hmm. uh, could you please stand, and I want to recognize their twins. So thank you all for being here tonight, my Boy Scouts. We appreciate what you're doing in the community. And Dad, thank you so much for bringing them out tonight. They're really uh, doing great things in the community. 
Uh, I would like to ask my communications director, Rick Martin, to come please come forward and read our, uh, our announcements for tonight. And then I'll follow up with just requesting our, uh, asking our commissioners if they have any announcements and then we'll close. Good evening, uh, Chairman Jones and Board of Commissioners and staff. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of announcements yeah. <laughs> tonight, six uh, to say the least. Uh, uh, beginning with, there'll be a job fair here in Douglas County Wednesday, tomorrow, August 22nd, uh, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the morning at West Georgia Technical College, the Douglas campus. Address is 4600 Timber Ridge Drive. Uh, it's going to be in a community room in Building B, as in Boy. Uh, you must register to attend. Registration is free. Uh, anyone interested in attending uh, should contact WorkSource Georgia at 404 463 3327. And want to encourage those who want to register online, they can go on celebratedouglascounty.com where the same information is available. Uh, moving on, the Douglas County Community Strategic Plan, you may have uh, read in the paper and, and heard, uh, is unveiling. Uh, the unveiling is taking place tomorrow, August 22nd, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Douglasville Conference Center at O'Neill Plaza. After months of research, community input, and planning, Douglas Unite Partners will unveil the plans for uh, Douglasville and Douglas County, including new community branding, a strategic plan presentation uh, from Avalanche Consulting. Uh, it's going to be a family atmosphere, live music, uh, entertainment activities for all ages, uh, remarks from local leaders, as a matter of fact. Chairman Jones, you'll be delivering uh, welcome remarks as well. Um, and for more information, again, the public's invited to uh, go online, celebratedouglascounty.com for more information. The 2018 Douglas County Federal and State Legislative Update will be on Thursday, August 23rd, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Douglasville Conference Center. Uh, the public is invited to come and get updates from federal and state legislators uh, on what's happening in Washington, D.C. and also Atlanta. Uh, for further information, uh, you can contact Director of External Affairs Tiffany Stewart Stanley at 770-920-7436. Uh, speaking of external affairs, that department is also accepting applications uh, for an exciting opportunity. Uh, from high, for high school sophomores and juniors. It's the Douglas County Youth Commission. Uh, the program is dedicated to educating young citizens about the importance of being actively conscious of their local government environment and the opportunities available in the public sector. The program will run from September through April. For more information, uh, they can contact uh, Tabria H. Cobb uh, at co.douglas.ga.us uh, there's a nice article with details, I should say. It's going to be easier to get that information online at CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. Uh, applications are due by September 7th, and the program will start September 25th. Join Keep Douglas County Beautiful, Douglasville, Douglas County Water Sewer Authority, Advancing Modern Professionals in Douglas County and the Douglas County Master Gardens for the Rivers Alive Cleanup and Maintenance Day. Uh, it's happening at the Courthouse uh, Nature Trail. It's happening on Saturday, September 8th, from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. They're encouraging volunteers to come out. Uh, it's a great opportunity to clean up, uh, and it's part of the Keep Douglas County Beautiful initiative. Uh, to receive more information, it is available online, celebratedouglascounty.com, or you can call 770 920-7593 for further information. Last but not least, September Saturdays, the largest community festival here in Douglas County that we have. Yours truly, the Communications and Community Relations Department through the Board of Commissioners. Uh, is pleased to announce that it will be happening the last two Saturdays of September, September 22nd and September 29th. We are still collecting um, vendor applications and exhibitor registrations it's still open. Details are online. CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Director Martin. We appreciate you. Uh, any other announcements from the Board of Commissioners that you may have something that's specific to your districts? 
Okay, with that being said, um, thank you so much. And um, if there are no any if there are no other discussions or any announcements, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.